Pope Francis is in Cairo, the first visit by a leader of the Roman Catholic Church in 17 years, at a time when Christians are under increasing attack in Egypt. Can the Pope's trip foster better relations between Christians and Muslims and help end the violence? This is Inside Story. Hello, I'm Jane Dutton. Pope Francis says his visit to Egypt is a journey of unity and fraternity. It is the first time a leader of the Roman Catholic Church has set foot in Egypt for almost two decades. He was invited by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and Egypt's religious leaders. It's been seen as an opportunity to promote better relations between Christians and Muslims. Orthodox Egyptian Christians, known as Copts, are worried about increasing violence after several attacks on churches. Let's take a look at Egypt's Christian community and the challenges they face. Orthodox Christians comprise about 10% of the population of about 92 million. Another 600,000 people are Roman Catholics and Protestants. The Orthodox Christians, also known as Copts in Egypt, have suffered sectarian attacks for years and more recently have become the target of the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. Earlier this month, bombings at two churches killed at least 45 people. ISIL claimed responsibility for the blasts in the cities of Alexandria and Tanta. In December, Cairo's largest Coptic cathedral was bombed, leaving at least 25 people dead. In addition to the attacks, many of Egypt's Christians say they face legal discrimination. A new law passed in August last year says governors can deny church building permits without giving any reason. Well, let's introduce our guest for today's show. Joining us from Rome is Father Bernardo Cevalera, editor of Asia News, a press agency of the Roman Catholic Pontifical Institute for Foreign Missions. And on set here in Doha is Mohammed Al Masri, Associate Professor of Media and Cultural Studies at the Doha Institute for Graduate Studies. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us. Let me start off with you, Father Bernardo Cevalera. Why is the Pope there? But the Pope is going there, first of all, to show solidarity to the church who has been uh, attacked so violently by the terrorists, but also to try to um, increase a little bit the sympathy of the uh, international community towards um, Egypt, because uh, Egypt is, is in a very deep economic crisis. So uh, if Egypt is uh, supported, then also the Muslim world and the Catholic world in the Middle East can be, can be helped. And thirdly, uh, which is also very important, uh, he's going to speak, I think, uh, in this moment perhaps, or uh, in a few minutes, uh, he will speak at the Congress uh, run by uh, Al-Azhar, the University Al-Azhar, because he wants to uh, press much more for a coexistence and for a friendship between Christians and Muslims. I think all these, uh, these uh, motives are uh, related to his uh, trip, which is also very courageous, I would say. Many people in Italy uh, to told the Pope that perhaps he is a little bit crazy to go there with uh, all these uh, difficulties about security. Okay, Mohammed al Masri, I mean, what's the feeling amongst Egyptians, the fact that he's there, is this seen as a good thing? Right, well this is a really interesting visit. I think symbolically on a number of levels um, the Pope's visit is very, uh, is very meaningful. On the one hand, uh, he's, he's pretty popular even in the Muslim world. We should remember that Pope Francis has taken pretty excellent positions on a lot of humanitarian crises, including those affecting Muslims like the Syrian refugee crisis, for example. He's also went out of his way to defend Islam uh, against allegations that it's a violent religion, that it's prone to terrorism, uh, and so on and so forth. And, and you could make an argument that he's done more to defend Islam than some Muslim leaders. Um, so there's, I think, you know, you're going to find some uh, favorable views. Um, on the other hand, I think the visit is is complicated for political reasons. Um, there's the fear that. 
the CC administration won't heed whatever sort of message of peace uh, the Pope uh, comes with. And I think there's also the risk raised by some analysts that a visit to the CC administration could be seen as a type of um, tacit uh, legitim le legitimization of that government which has been responsible for a lot of uh, human rights violations, including violations against the Coptic, Coptic Christian minority. Bernardo, could that be true? I mean, is this seen as tacit support of, of Sisi and his policies, the Pope being there? Could that be the message that people see here? <laughs> but, you know, uh, you know um, the Catholics there and also the Copts, they have uh, uh, supported and uh, suffered uh, for many things during uh, the Nasser time, during the Mubarak time, the Sadat time, during the Mohammed Morsi time. And it seems, it, it seems to me that because we have uh, um, daily contacts with the Copts in Egypt, it seems to me that uh, uh, Al-Sisi is uh, doing his best for security, first of all. And uh, so he is trying his best to um, uh, put in security all the churches, although perhaps a little bit late, uh, later than, uh, than the uh, terrorist attack. Yeah, let me and ask secondly, you about that, because I know that many Christians there were very angry that these attacks happened in the first place. They say that they've been calling for heightened security yeah, fact, for a long fact, time. So why has it, he been slow it was, off the mark? It was too late. It mm -hmm. was too late. But it's... Uh, it's something that uh, I think he is trying, uh, is trying to change also the legislations and also pushing the uh, Islamic legislations for uh, an equality between uh, rights and duties uh, of Christians and Muslims. And I think this is uh, also very interesting, very interesting also for uh, a modernization of uh, Islam in Egypt. Why was Sisi slow in providing security. I mean, clearly security was needed. They'd been asking for it. We'd seen these uh, sectarian threats, the, the violence against Christians there. Right. What went wrong from a security point of view? Well, frankly, a lot has gone wrong from a security uh, uh, standpoint. Remember, Sisi carried out this military coup um, and then ran for president largely on a security platform. And what we've seen in Egypt over the past three and a half years is an absence of security. We've seen uh, unprecedented instability and violence and uh, acts of terrorism. I think that the government should have done a lot more personally to um, protect churches, particularly given the fact that there were other attacks uh, and there were warnings uh, by these ISIS uh, cells. So I think that the government deserves some blame here. Um, they've also been a bit slow, in my mind at least, to restore some of the churches that were destroyed by extremists back in 2013. Um, so I don't, I don't give Sisi as much, uh, you know, as much credit as maybe, uh, as maybe some do. Um, I think he's failed from a security uh, perspective, um, and I think the numbers sort of bear that out. Uh, I also think we have to keep in mind that uh, the Sisi government has committed, as I mentioned in, in my introductory remarks, unprecedented human rights violations, and there are many political scientists who believe that those kinds of transgressions are precisely the things that fuel radicalization and they've given uh, a sort of uh, green light uh, for groups like ISIS to, to then be able to recruit uh, in the Sinai and elsewhere uh, in Egypt. All right. I, I'm going to return to your point because it's an important one and uh, we've seen growing violence, growing bloodshed uh, on the streets because of this. But I want to bring in our guest from Cairo via Skype, a non-resident fellow at the Tahrir Institute for Middle East Policy, focusing on political analysis. Timothy Kelders, very good to have you with us. So the Pope is in Egypt right now, and I'm just wondering what the feeling is there in Egypt, how much enthusiasm there is for his visit and, and how important this timing is. Um, I think that uh, in, in terms of uh, the Christian population, uh, they're, they're happy to see him come. Uh, I think that in general, there's, a, there's more actually, there's more awe probably at the uh, extent to which certain neighborhoods have gotten cleaned up and security has been deployed in a pretty uh, intense fashion than there is uh, a focus on him being here. But I think also people, 
see it as a positive in the sense that it's an opportunity to showcase Egypt as a place that's possible to visit because a lot of people are affected by the collapse in tourism that we've witnessed. Um, but uh, I think that the uh, I think that the the Pope's uh, objective of rebuilding relations uh, with uh, the Muslim community internationally and trying to move away from a lot of the religious sectarianism that we're seeing not only in the Middle East but also amongst Western politicians uh, in the other direction against Muslims uh, is is an important one. Uh, and I I hope that this can uh, deliver something on that front. I mean, how deep are the divisions between Christians and Muslims at the moment in Egypt? And does this mirror what we are seeing in other parts of the world? I think that, uh, I think that it's, uh, it's a complicated situation. So on one front, there's absolutely discrimination against Christians in Egypt. Uh, it's manifest in the laws with respect to, for example, building or repairing churches or uh, in terms of personal status issues related to marriage, for example. Um, and then you also see it in, on, a, on a social front. Um, the intensity of it uh, varies depending on where in Egypt we're talking about. In rural areas, you tend to see more uh, violence that's driven by some sort of sectarianism, whereas in urban centers, it tends to be uh, a bit more subtle and social. Um, but overall, I mean, people do, in most instances, manage to, to live together uh, and, and, and work together uh, without, it, without issue. Um, I think, it's, I, I think it's hard to paint with a single brush uh, the dynamics between the Christian and Muslim community in Egypt. Bernardo, how big a problem is this for Christians? I mean, many of them feel that some of the laws are against them, that they feel like second-class citizens, that we've already dealt with the security. I mean, what are they telling the church, and how would they like this to be addressed? And I'm just wondering what sort of clout they have in the country. I think this is, uh, this is uh, the campaign that uh, uh, um, Al-Sisi and uh, also the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar have launched. It is uh, to try to think about a state in which Christians and Muslims, they have the, the same rights and they have the same citizenship. So this means that they can go um, in the every level of the bureaucracy, of the administration of the states. They can have uh, uh, same opportunities uh, for uh, votes, same opportunities to become a president, for example, and the same opportunities for work. Uh, this is a very important fact, not only for Christians, to have the same rights of Muslims, but also for Muslims, because uh, in an international society like that one we are, we are going uh, towards to, uh, that is, we need, uh, we need to, to, live, uh, to live as companions, as uh, sharing the same values and uh, sharing the same perspectives. So it is uh, an attempt also to modernize Islam. I, I think that this is uh, the very important topic of uh, um, this trip also by the Pope. Uh, Mohammed, modernize Islam, if we can pick up on that point. I mean, is there a peer equal to the Pope in the Muslim world who preaches the same sort of peace and outreach that we're seeing at the moment? I mean, there are a number of efforts by, by Muslims to sort of uh, uh, build bridges and, and, and also to, to use that word, you know, sort of modernize or adopt uh, to the, um, uh, 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 the globalizing world that we, in which we live. Um, but I think uh, in many cases, Muslims have been too slow, frankly, uh, uh, to, to um, sort of evolve with the, with the, changing, with the changing times. Um, Al-Azhar in Egypt has, has not always played a particularly uh, constructive role. You know, I referenced uh, the military takeover and I referenced some of the, vi the, the violations, numerous violations. You know, Al-Azhar has, in some cases, tacitly supported some of that. In other cases, they've been silent in the face of atrocities. The same, unfortunately, is also true to, to some extent of the, of the Coptic church uh, in Egypt, uh, offering uh, um, some tacit support, uh, or at least sort of sidestepping some of the, the, the larger questions about human rights uh, in Egypt. So I embrace the, 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 this sort of message of you know, tolerance and building bridges and modernization and equality. But I question, you know, I have serious questions about the ability of a government like this to be able to, to lead that sort of an effort. Timothy, can a government like CC lead reconciliation when we are seeing these human rights abuses, human rights abuses committed on, on a, an extreme level? 
I mean, in theory, it could. It doesn't have any sincere commitment to do so. Uh, it had an opportunity, for example, last fall with the new uh, church building law that they were uh, that they were debating to to sink, to create a single uh, law respecting the building of religious institutions, religious buildings, place of worship, and they elected not to. They elected to pass a law that had a great deal of uh, extra regulations on the building of churches that don't exist for the building of mosques. And this is while Sisi is president, and the parliament's 100 percent supporting him on almost every single uh, bill that he puts forward. And certainly the opportunity existed. So yes, he could, but I don't see that as a sincere objective of his. It's a rhetorical position that he takes, and that's something he's going to say uh, in the press and uh, in his public appearances. And Timothy, how will the pope overcome allegations that he is there uh, supporting Sisi, just the fact that he's in the country? I mean, this is a man accused of uh, quashing freedom of speech, massive torture, mass arrests. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, the, uh, the approach that they've... Uh, the situation, for example, in the prisons, where you have this huge number of people that have been routed up, many of them completely peaceful protesters, um, who are being put in prison with people with, who are actually quite a lot more extreme than that. And so that, that interaction actually is a crucible in which you can expand the pool of people who are open to the idea of using violence to, to achieve their political or uh, ideological uh, objectives. And so this, this mass imprisonment has actually created an uh, opportunity for mass recruitment, which is quite dangerous. Um, and we've seen this elsewhere. We saw it in Iraq with uh, the, the, the beginning of ISIS. Uh, and so the policies undertaken by the government are, are short-sighted when it comes to these issues. And undoubtedly, it plays a role in the violence we see. At the same time, it is worth noting that sectarian violence and sectarianism in Egypt predates this government, predates the coup, predates the revolution. This is something we've seen for decades in Egypt. Um, so it's important not to reduce it to one individual or one government, but at the same time, we can examine critically the role that this government plays in, uh, in failing to improve the situation. And Bernardo, is that what the Pope will be doing? Let's go back to the allegations that he's actually supporting Sisi by being there. We know that the Pope is quite outspoken when it comes to his foreign policy. Will he tackle Sisi on the human rights abuses? It is. Uh, um, we, we also denounce the, 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 the violation of human rights. Uh, but I would say, uh, let us compare Al-Sisi with the all other Middle East countries and all other uh, Gulf countries. And we can, we can see that uh, there is not too much difference between Al-Sisi and uh, the, other, the other governments uh, ab uh, about uh, freedom of uh, speech, freedom of uh, press, uh, and also freedom of, uh, freedom of expression. So uh, what, I, what I want to say is that uh, it's not to justify Al-Sisi, but I, I see that he is trying to move from this situation in a, in a very bad uh, situation of uh, um, violence, of terrorism, of uh, poverty, and so on, trying to uh, change laws to change uh, to give more security to the to the to the to the, his, his people so i think that uh, at least he is doing something other governments in the gulf or uh, in the middle east they are not doing anything they are but do you think that, that the attack on christians dying. excuse me jumping in here is easy because these leaders don't stand up for them uh, and you know let's talk about what we've seen in syria and iraq and how they've come under attack there but uh, in Syria and Iraq, they attack Christians, but they attack also Muslims. They attack everybody because terrorism, it seems to me, that it is against humanity. And so uh, uh, in Syria and Iraq, uh, the so-called Islamic states, uh, they kill uh, uh, Shiite people, they kill Yazidis, and then they kill also Christians. And uh, uh, the point is how to build up a society in which this kind of terrorism, which, um, uh, which uh, uh, claim to be Islamic, how can be uh, destroyed, how can be uh, emarginated, and how can built up, we can build up a society in which Muslims and Christians can, can work together. I think Al-Sisi is doing something because his speech two years ago to the imams 
of uh, Egypt for a modernization of the society and a modernization of uh, Islam, it was something that uh, even, I think, Barack Obama would have uh, applauded him. How important is the Pope's visit now in healing relations between Muslims and Christians, not only e in Egypt, now other parts of the world? You also touched on the refugees and the comments that he's made about Muslims. And has he been able to undo the damage that many saw that his predecessor did? Well, I think uh, it's, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's a very important visit for many symbolic reasons. I think it's really important for the Coptic Christian community, first of all, in Egypt, to know that, they're, that they have this sort of support. Uh, it's an expression of solidarity. This is a community that's historically been repressed. As Timothy mentions, you know, um, this goes back decades, frankly, uh, the repression of Christians uh, in Egypt to one extent or another uh, and across leaders. And I think we have to keep in mind that the government, even though there's a new face now with Sisi, it's essentially the same sort of deep state government. Um, and they've done a lot of bad things to Muslims and to secularists and to Christians. And we shouldn't forget that in 2011, in the fall of 2011, the Egyptian military uh, committed a massacre against uh, Coptic Christian protesters, unarmed Coptic Christian protesters, where they uh, they shot them and they, they ran over uh, some of them with uh, military tanks intentionally. And the reaction of the military was to sort of largely just sort of downplay and, and sidestep this. So um, this is part of the larger context. And I, I, you know, I, I do think the CC government is pretty unique in the Middle East, you know, with all due respect to the, to, uh, the other guest. Um, you know, uh, we're talking about a government that has carried out uh, mass killings uh, of unarmed protesters in unprecedented fashion, uh, mass death sentences. Um, there have been, uh, uh, there's mass torture and, and rape in the prisons. If you look at the human rights reports, I just, this is the kind of thing that fuels radicalization. Um, I don't know that the CC government is, is the right government to sort of bring about this sort of, uh, you know, modernization uh, that, that we're talking about. Okay, if he can't do it, Timothy, can somebody like the Pope make a difference? He is clearly very different from his predecessor. And can this outreach start to make the small fundamental changes that are so needed and overcoming ISIL's drive to drive a wedge between Christians and Muslims? Well, I think it's important to look at the, this trip outside of the context of Egypt as well. Um, so if we, if we take a step back and look at the more global problem of uh, tension between people who are promoting uh, anti-Muslim uh, sentiment in the West or anti-Christian sentiment in the Middle East, um, his efforts to move away from that and to say that we have to work together and that we're, we're all, uh, in, in his view, children of the same creator, uh, moving in that direction is, is, a, is a positive message that I, I think leaders in both parts of the world need to take on board and they need to consider the, the implications and consequences the sectarian rhetoric. Yeah. But not a house. So, sorry, Karen. The relationship between Christians and Muslims, it is re really terrible that there is a, such a, a kind of uh, imagination, a public imagination of a fight between Christians and Muslims. While there is, uh, uh, Muslims are more than one billion. Christians are more than one billion uh, in, in the world. And if uh, we both could uh, work together would be wonderful. I think that uh, what the Pope is going to leave as a message is uh, just uh, to stress this coexistence. For example, the Pope is trying, uh, is accepted into the Vatican in Rome, uh, some families, uh, some Muslim families of uh, Syrian refugees. He, he has supported the Yazidis. He tries to dialogue uh, with uh, Al-Azhar and so on. So uh, this kind of gesture that is uh, uh, accepting uh, Muslims in uh, his own community. Uh, so if the Muslim can accept Christians in their community. I've been, uh, uh, I've been in Iraq and I've seen that uh, uh, the Catholic Church in Iraq uh, among the refugees tries to help Shiite, Yazidis, Christians, uh, Sunni. The, 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 the Patriarch of Baghdad okay. is given a lot of uh, gifts to, to the Sunni Muslims uh, in, uh, different, in different cities who were, were uh, um, destroyed by, by the Islamic State. I think that if we give each other these kind of signs, uh, I think that the coexistence is possible.
Okay. Thank you very much to all three of you, Timothy, Timothy Kelvas, Bernardo Chevalera, and Mohammed El Masri. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Jane Dutton, and the rest of the team, bye-bye for now. Thank you.